You're listening to the 49 Carrots Podcast, a 49ers goldmine production with Stephanie Sanchez. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another edition of the 49 Carrots Podcast. I'm your host, Steph. It is Monday, April 1st, but we don't have jokes for you today. Um, In fact, we've got um, some serious matters to talk about. The 49ers cap situation is always is uh, just as interesting as everything else this team does. And because we're in the middle of the off season, the 49ers are in the middle of negotiations with a star receiver, all these things draft is coming up, man. We've got a lot of questions in regards to the cap and where the, where the 49ers stand financially. So I got the perfect guest for me today. Uh, Jason Hurley, 49ers cap guru. You guys might know him as 49ers cap on Twitter, where he posts a lot about the 49ers uh, cap situation and always keeping us up to date there. So Jason, how are you doing today? Doing good. How are you? I am great. I uh, hope you had a, a great weekend. Great Easter um, yep. is what all, all my viewers here. Um, but Jason, I mean, let's not uh, bury the lead here. Just right off the bat, let's get into this Brandon Ayuk talk because, man, this reminds me a lot of the Debo Samuel situation of two years ago. Um, You know, a star receiver uh, like Debo, Debo was at that point in time, wanting a lot of money. And, you know, wide receivers are very entertaining, right? Like they they go the social media route and it gets a little dicey, right? And and they involve Mike Tomlin (laughs) or just other, you know, a lot of a lot of different things being said uh, about, you know, what Brandon Ayuk wants and how far apart they are in contract negotiations at this time. Uh, What I always remind people is it's March, it's April. Um, but just looking at it, 49ers, how how could they afford uh, Brandon Ayuk? How, how do you see that kind of breaking down for them in the coming uh, months as they get into the weeds of negotiation? Okay, no problem. I can explain it to you, Steph. This way, um, with Brandon Ayuk, we all know he wants to be paid like a top receiver. He's earned it. I think they will come in around 25 to 26 million a year. The way they will do it is they will probably, probably, I would say, give like a 25 million to 30 million dollar signing bonus. That'll help lower his cap number for this year. They can save like six to seven, maybe eight million at the most by extending him. Just like they saved money by extending Bosa last year and Debo the year before. But it is reminiscence, re- reminiscent of Debo because he was unhappy. Um, he wanted to be paid. And everybody was freaking out, you know. You had either on one side people were... Oh, he doesn't want to be here, so trade him. I'll be other people were no, you got to keep him. I was always on that side that they're gonna sign him, and that's what they did. Now, fast forward two years, I don't know if the report is true that he's looking for 27 and a half million a year, and we're offering 22 million. I don't know the person that tweeted it out or posted it on Twitter X, extra Twitter, whatever you want to call it. I don't know the person, so I don't know how reliable he is. But if that's the case, that's a bit of a low ball offer by the 49ers at $22 million a year. If they really don't want to pay him more than Debo got. But the problem is... They have to look at it as this is a longer term investment. Mm-hmm. Ayuk, Ayuk doesn't take the punishment that Debo does. Yeah, Debo does more work 
when he's out there, he's taking the punishment. I mean, people say he's not a good route runner. I mean, that could be worked on. I think he's an okay route runner. But Debo, he takes the punishment. Brandon Ayuk is a guy that he's always open. And he seems like the perfect wide receiver number one for, for the team. But for some reason, he's the fourth option on a team that's clearly loaded with talent. So I, I can see where he's coming from if the report is true that he wants that much money. I don't think he's going to get it. I don't know any team that's going to pay him more than what or close to what Devontae Adams is getting, $28 million. I just – that's a lot of money. So I, I, I personally think 25 to $26 million a year – I think a a compromise will happen, but it won't come until after the draft, more in the July, August area, like, like, like usual, the 49ers, they like to do their extensions with their star players in the summertime. Right. It's something that I don't necessarily like, but I get it. They're more focused on improving the roster, and then they'll extend their players later on. I know they extended McKibbitz and Odom before free agency began, but those are two low-end players compared to Brandon Ayuk. So it takes a while for this to come. It's going to take a while for the contract for everything to just come together and for them to agree on everything. Yeah. As, as it always does, right? Like, you know, you said it, I, I have said it. A lot of people have said it at this point that the 49ers, this is how they like to do business. They, Mm -hmm. they can't, at least these big contracts, they kind of wait till the draft is out of the way so they can put their sole focus on, you know, getting this negotiation done. And so, Yeah, it was Mike Garofalo who said the 49ers were far apart in Mm -hmm. negotiations with Brandon Ayuk. And I believe it was Brad Spielberger of PFF that then gave some numbers. Um, (laughs) And and I don't know if that's just from reports or if, you know, that's coming from somewhere uh, he knows, but... You know, that's where the number specifically came from. Yeah. But it's not surprising in like March or April that they're far apart because all we know right now before they've even gotten into the weeds of negotiation is Brennan Ayuk wants this amount. The 49ers are going to offer this amount to start just because like, I mean, we've heard they lowball guys like to start mm-hmm. in negotiations and then they kind of chip away at, you know, somewhere in the middle where they meet. Right. And that's when the extension gets done. Now, that's probably many months, you know, a few months from now, but that's why I'm not, I'm personally not panicking about that. Um, I think the deal gets done and, you know, the, the way you kind of say he'll probably be in the 25, 26 million APY range. I think that makes sense. You know, Debo Samuel uh, was at 23.8. So that would put him above Debo if that's what he wants. Um, And so I think that would make a lot of sense. Now, speaking of Debo, um, Mm -hmm. you know, a couple, I think it was last year we were talking about this. Anytime that I've had you in like the last two years, we're like, can the 49ers afford to have both of those guys, Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk on these big money contracts. Right. And, you know, your answer was always, yes, they could. The question more so is, do they want to do that? Right. Cause like having two big money contracts tied to receivers, maybe, you know, not the biggest, the greatest thing you can do as far as like team building goes. And we know the 49ers are hitting a bit of a crossroads, at least um, a little bit now, maybe more so next year. Yeah. Um, and so I, I do think like they're, they're kind of at a point where they have to think about what they're going to do with Debo, assuming that they do sign Ayuk to, um, you know, his big contract. So Debo this year is set to make $20.9 million. 
And I know there was conversation about, you know, him potentially being a trade candidate. That didn't make a lot of sense because yeah. if the 49ers traded him, uh, you know, before June 1st, it would uh, be 21.7, uh, almost 21.8 in dead cap. That doesn't make any type of sense. Um it makes a little more sense after June 1st, but even then, you know, personally, I think he plays out 2024 and then after 2024, they have an out in his contract. Right. So you kind of feel yeah. like that's more likely the path they go and they let him walk after the 2024 season. I think it's going to really depend on how well he plays. Um, First off, the trading of Debo this year makes no sense, like you said. $21.8 million in dead money. You only save about $6 million in cap room right now. Okay, you trade him. You got to find someone to replace him in the draft. Do you really trust a rookie to do what Debo does? I don't. And then, and then you look at after June 1st. Well, okay. You're trading for future picks. Maybe you get a receiver in return or, or an offensive lineman. Yeah. But in a way, you trade Debo after June 1st, you're hurting your team more because you're taking away one of one of the, t- the top weapons that Brock Purdy has. Mm-hmm. As for whether or not he's going to be here past 2024, it depends, like I said, on how well he plays, uh, how healthy he is. Um, basically, production and health. They gotta, they gotta use him the right way. They, um, it's what I'm worried about with Christian McCaffrey is they're just there is no real number two running back on the team, so yeah. McCaffrey got pretty much every snap almost. And I'm worried about is can can Debo hold up with his body because he's he's had numerous injuries, you know. He he had the um the, the so- shoulder injury after the Cleveland game, and then again heading into the playoffs or in the playoffs. I can't remember exactly, but he he's a guy that you have to give credit to. He will play through injury, but do the 49ers want to pay two receivers top tier money? Right. I think that's 50, 50. (laughs) Um, If Debo remains where he is putting up a thousand receiving yards, getting like 300 rushing yards, 12 touchdowns a year. I mean, that to me is a no brainer. You keep them. You do what you have to do to keep them. I'm already in the, in the mindset that this is the last year for some players on the team. Oh yeah. Because you can't pay three receivers. I love Juwan Jennings so much, but you can't pay Juwan Debo and Iuk. It's just not possible. Not when Brock Purdy's going to get his extension next year, and then there's a there's 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 a good amount of players. You've got Diamondor Lenore, you've got Dre Greenlaw. We got to see how he comes off the Achilles injury. We got to see how Talanoa Hufanga comes off the ACL injury. We got to see how Aaron Banks performs. Aaron Banks may want ten million a year or more. With, with with the way guards are getting paid, I mean Robert Hunt got twenty million a year from I think yeah. Car- Carolina, and that's just ridiculous. Yeah, the guard market exploded <laughs> this off season. So I, I, yeah. I actually I, I look at what John Feliciano got with the 49ers got with him bringing him back, and yeah. it looks like a steal. I mean, he can play yeah. multiple spots on the line and. You know he's he's coming back on a, a pretty pretty team friendly deal. And oh yeah, yeah, two point yeah. seven five. That's... I think it's two point seven five. Um, he can make an extra one million in incentives, which he probably will if he plays yeah. all the games. 
he yeah. missed he missed out on his incentives last year because he had, he didn't get to sixty percent or higher. So, but he and he's proven he should be the right guard. I mean, that's I obvious. So. Yeah, I think so too. They need to stop the Spencer Burford experiment. I think that has kind of run its course uh, a little bit. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see how that shakes out with the offensive line. But you did mention something, Jason, that you know, did kind of get me thinking. Now, you mentioned the injuries with Debo. He is someone who's very physical. Um, so, as you said, he takes the punishment, right? He he kind of pays for it. He gets into um, some injury trouble. George Kittle, kind of similar, right? Like, he, yeah. he has dealt with a lot of injuries as well. He had a core muscle surgery, you know, this offseason, uh, you know, something that was lingering for him this year. Uh, and that's kind of been the story with Kittle that, you know, there's kind of something always going on with him. He's a, also a very physical player who's almost always on the field too, whether he's blocking, whether he's catching, you know, running routes, all that. Right. And so the 49ers just, you know, released someone who you wouldn't have imagined would have right, been, right. his time would have been up already with the 49ers. And that was Eric Armstead, right? Now, yeah. before the release, the 49ers in previous seasons, their off seasons, had restructured Eric Eric Armstead's contract quite a bit, right? Yes. Um, and so my question is, is was this result of them now wanting Eric to take a pay cut? Was that a result of you know, kind of kicking that can, can down the road and restructuring his contract so many times in the years prior that, you know, now his 2024 number was something uh, they weren't really comfortable paying, especially when you take into account some of the injuries, like, you know, all the games he kind of missed in the last two years. Do you kind of feel like restructuring kind of got it to that point? Yeah, I think two things got to it the restructuring, as you said, and then what you mentioned just now, the injuries. The fact that he's only played in, like, I think, I'm not sure the exact number, but over the last two years, he's missed a lot of games. He mm -hmm. missed almost the entire season in 22, and then in 23, he missed, like, five or six games. Right. So I think they felt that, okay, we're going to approach Eric and we're going to ask him to take a pay cut. We're not going to extend him, which I would have been okay with them extending him as long as it was reasonable money. But I think they made the right choice. My only gripe is the offer. If Eric is telling the truth, which I have no reason to believe he's not right. $6 million for one year is it's a slap in the face. I mean, yeah, he was a really good player for the 49ers. No, he's not the Forrest Buckner. We all pretty much wish we never traded Buckner. That, that, that deal didn't work out. Ken Law was a bust, but you got to move on from it. So we did it to keep Armstead and Jimmy Ward. Yeah. So yeah. I, well, I, I like Armstead, but I think it was time. Yeah, I think it, it, it makes sense. I agree. The 6 million definitely a slap in the face for Armstead. It makes sense. He, he felt a type of way, right. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, wanted to kind of test, test his market um, outside of the 49ers. It worked out for him. Um, mm -hmm. And so now, you know, the 49ers in free agency kind of had to replenish the defensive line all over again just because of a lot of guys who, you know, they were said to be free agents. They left elsewhere. Um, and, you know, with the release of Eric Armstead as well. Um, so now you have a lot of guys that I've noticed a lot of their free agents they've signed are on like one year deals. There may be like one or two that are like on two year deals, but the majority of them were one year deals. And so when we look at where the 49ers are at right now in 2024, and we kind of look at it as this very last chance at this window, right? This current window uh, with the current guys that they have. 
And then it kind of seems like 2025 maybe shake uh, shapes up more to be the retooling, you know, period. Right. So is that yeah. kind of how you see it too, with like all of these one year deals and like who's still under contract beyond 2024? Yeah. I, um, I view 2025 as not, um, Definitely not rebuilding. It's like you said, a retooling year. I don't believe the window is closing on them because I do believe in Brock Purdy and I do believe he's a franchise quarterback. And I know there's, there's going to be haters out there who think Brock Purdy's a, a product of Kyle's system or because he's got all these weapons around him. But fact is every great quarterback had great weapons around them. But right. 2025, they signed so many players this offseason to one-year deals. Mm -hmm. The only players that they signed to two-year deals were Leonard Floyd. Um, I have no idea how to say his name. Gross Matos, his first name. Mm -hmm. yes. That's how you say it. <laughs> Yeah, you get her gross mottos and um Jordan Elliott. But even Jordan Elliott, the contract was so team friendly that he didn't even get guaranteed base salary. The other two did. And then they traded for Malik Collins, who seems more durable than Armstead, maybe not as good in the run game, you know. Mm -hmm. He's a better pass rusher, and he's more durable. He played 16 games last year. But he, he is under contract next year. So technically, they brought in four defensive linemen uh, that have two years on their deal. But the other, the other, um, the other players they brought in, uh, Chase Lucas... He's mostly a special teamer if he's going to make it. That's a non-guaranteed $985,000 contract. But one that's really surprising to me or intrigues me is Isaac Yadam. I'm not sure how you say it. Yadam. Yadam. Yeah. yeah. I, he had a breakout season last year with New Orleans. And it looks like he might be a steal, but then come 2025, can you keep him? That's yeah, exactly. the problem. Because yeah. you've also got Mooney Ward that is set to count 12.296 million, I think it is, in dead money. You don't want to carry that. You want to resign Ward. At least I do. I think mm -hmm. you would want to resign him extend him they, they can get that hit that that cap hit lowered so where they you know save three to four million dollars that helps them to bring in some other players next year but even like a letter floyd he and gross mottos they're not guaranteed to be here mm -hmm. next year yeah um so yeah, that's interesting on Mooney Ward because, like, I was actually on a show just earlier talking about should the 49ers extend Mooney Ward or should they extend D'Amador Lenore because both of those guys and Yadam, who is on a one year deal, all those guys are said to be free agents after yeah. 2024. Uh, and my thought is, you know, I think you would want to extend Lenore just because he's a little bit younger, he's only going to be like 25. Uh, you know, after this season. And so I think you look at Mooney Ward, I believe he's 27. So he's, he's starting to get up there in age and, you know, I don't know if they want to, you know, uh, <laughs> sign or extend someone who's, who's maybe going over the hill of, of NFL career. I don't know. Um, but you did mention something interesting is like one way to bring the cap down is if you extend them and kind of like spread that out through, you know, two, three more seasons. Right. Mm -hmm. So that, that is interesting. 
Uh, and it'll, I think after the draft is when they'll kind of decide and, and reassess the cornerback situation because who knows, maybe they bring in someone in the draft who, who they feel is good. They obviously like Daryl Luter too, so maybe he can be someone they feel can start uh, next season as well. But yeah, that, that one's interesting to, to see how they, they look at that. Now, my last question for you is, of course, the next big question in contract negotiations, right? Brock Purdy. I mean, yep. we had a Jed York in Orlando at the uh, league meetings uh, who was asked about it. And he, he doesn't seem phased by the fact that he's <laughs> going to have to pay Brock Purdy, you know, an absorbent amount. He's going to be probably the highest paid quarterback when when his contract is all said and done. And so I think the number, you know, he threw out was 40 million, right? Because he said, I don't know how many players are making over 40 million annually as a quarterback right now. Turns out there's like 12 quarterbacks who make 40 million plus. Um, And so obviously uh, I think Joe Burrow right now is at the top. Um, He's making 55 million, right? And so every year, every new quarterback deal sets the market all over again. Mm -hmm. We know how it goes. So, (laughs) I mean, can the 49ers Mm -hmm. afford a 55 plus million dollar contract could we even see like brock purdy asking for that much i mean he should right him and his representation i mean obviously should look to reset the market you mentioned him being a franchise guy i i agree that he is um and he's making a almost embarrassing amount of money right now when you look at it he's he's gonna make one million for this season, you know, not counting all the new endorsements he, he yeah. probably has, but yeah, yeah. Is it? Do you do you kind of see, feel like his new extension will kind of be like back pay almost for you know these few years he's been so severely underpaid to? Yeah, I um, yeah, I, I think he's gonna reset the market. I do. I think it's gonna be. It depends on what the market looks like ne- right. next year because you, I think you've got Trevor Lawrence, but I don't know if the Jaguars are actually going to give Lawrence, you know, more than Burrow got. But you never know. But with Brock, I have no problem with it. I look at the way they re- they, they structured Nick Bosa's contract. Mm-hmm. The first three years of that deal – are very, very low cap hits. Even next year, even though it's like 20 million, it's still nothing compared to his 34 million a year. Yeah, in the market. Yeah. So I think what they do is basically what they did with Nick Bosa is they give Brock Birdie a huge signing bonus. They spread that out over five years. And then, the, then the year after that could be like an option bonus. The Niners like to – what they like to do with their top players is they give them a signing bonus in the first year, and then the next year they give them an option bonus. With Nick Bosa, they actually did a three-tier bonus. Signing bonus in year one, which was last year, this year he had an option bonus, and then next year he has another option bonus, which is all fully guaranteed. It just prorates. So you you could see something like that for Brock. I don't know if Brock's gonna really be the kind of guy that's gonna ask or demand yeah, that kind think, of money. I think the same. Yeah, he's so humble. Like he is. He he <laughs> seems like he's just so happy to just be the starting quarterback of the 49ers, just just to be where he is. Yeah. You know, being able to make the Super Bowl as a second-year quarterback, last pick in the draft, this, this, you know, underdog story, you know, so many people doubting him, and I never doubted him for one bit. Once I saw him play, I was like, okay, you know, I got to see more. 
as it went on, yeah, this kid can play. And people who say, oh, well, he can't bring you from behind. Yeah, he can. He, he did it. He did it against Detroit. He did it against Green Bay. Last year, I mean, the year before, he did it again. He did it in Las Vegas. He's done it. Yeah. He's done it. So, yeah, I think the money he gets will be kind of like a, hey, we're going to give you a lot of money up front because we 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 know we had a steal <laughs> yeah. in your contract being the last pick of the draft. He basically got less than what what's crazy is if he had gone undrafted, there's a good chance he may have not signed with us. And yeah. he may have got more money guaranteed as an undrafted free agent than he sure. got as the last pick in the draft. Because some undrafted free agents get a good size signing bonus and I've seen it like 300,000 of their base salaries guaranteed. And that's more than the signing bonus for the last pick in the draft. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be interesting, right? Because, like, I, I kind of get the same sense you do that, oh, my God, like, Brock's so humble. Like, there's no way he's he could even, like, utter the words, I want, like, 40 million. Like, I don't know. I just don't. I don't see it. Now, his representation very melt very yeah. well might but like I don't, I don't see that coming from brock I, I know his agent's gonna probably fight for every dollar so i can see it going both ways right um yeah. and now tell us right now april 1st of 2024 where do the 49ers stand in cap space right now okay i don't know the exact number like i usually do i usually can tell you like seven point whatever i have them at 7.508 million under and i think it might be 564 at the end i i don't know i don't know why i even know that i guess i'm just crazy like that <laughs> <laughs> but yeah um i have them at a little over seven and a half million dollars in cap room now that doesn't include what potentially might happen with the brock wright offer sheet we right. don't know. I, I have no idea what the details are. Just a three-year, twelve million deal. Right. I, I think it is twelve million because they wouldn't. Normally, the Niners give out deals, and they're not anywhere near what you think they are or what they say they are. Like, oh, this guy, you know, the Niners signed that signed George Odom for seven million a year when it really comes in at like five million a year or something yeah. like that. So. Yeah. Right now, oh. yeah, Brock, Brock Wright. We'll have to see what happens with that. But before that signing, if it does happen, he they have till Wednesday. The Lions do to mm -hmm. uh, decline it or match it. We are about seven and a half under million under. Then in June is when we will get that eighteen million from the arm said release that's right because it was it was the uh the june po yeah the post june first designation yeah. yeah yep okay yeah and so for people that don't know i already knew that but for people that don't know like yes you know eric armstead was cut you know a few weeks ago right and because it was a post june first designation the cap savings from releasing him, they don't get that until, you know, June 1st. Right, so, right. Um, yeah. The, yeah. So right now, as, as Jason says, they're about like seven, you know, a little over 7 million. Uh, that should be enough though, Jason, to, for them to sign their draft class and then also maybe make a few veteran moves, vet minimum moves after the draft, would you say? Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, after the draft, the draft picks right now, if the season were to start when all players have to count against the cap, their draft pool, their um, the amount that they would have to give out for 2024 cap numbers, according to over the cap, is a little bit over $3 million, or not $3 million, I'm sorry, 
thinking wrong, 11 million for their 10 picks. But yeah. only the first, second, and third round pick in the offseason will count. So gotcha. they won't really have to have much cap room because also when they sign like their first round pick and say it's worth X amount of money, they're actually getting back 915 grand because he replaces the 51st player on the roster. So the 51st player goes down to 52 and then he doesn't count against the cap unless he has any kind of pro rated bonus or workout roster bonuses, which most don't. Okay. And the only thing that for the other seven draft picks, their pro rated bonus would count against the cap. So it, it'll be it'll be like two to three million dollars that they may need to sign. Okay. And That's then they'll be able bad. no and, and then they'll be able to um potentially bring in any type of uh veteran minimum guys, anything yeah. like that. Sean Gibson's still out there, so I mean mm -hmm. he's he's an option too, I think, for a yep. reunion if you know Gibson, of course, wants to continue playing, and mm -hmm. if the 49ers, you know, don't draft a, a safety uh relatively high. But you know, I hadn't updated you guys on the Brock Brock Wright thing. So let me just like give you the spiel now for those of you who aren't glued to Twitter, like you know, some of us. So Brock Wright, he's a Lions tight end. He was actually an undrafted free agent, I believe, in 2021. So he is a restricted free agent this season or this offseason, same as Juwan Jennings. Juwan Jennings with the 49ers, he signed a second-round tender, mm -hmm. uh, and I believe that's deal, that deal is worth uh, – help me out, Jason. I, I believe that one's like – It's $4.89 million. Okay, so that's Juwan Jennings' contract. And so a team, him being an RFA, a team can come in and offer him more. And then if the 49ers don't match that offer, then he would go to that other team. And uh, that team would also have to give the 49ers a second round pick back because he signed a second round tender. Now, Brock Wright, he was a former undrafted free agent. So the 49ers wouldn't have to give up anything uh, to get him, but they did sign Brock Wright to an offer sheet. And basically what that means is, you know, the 49ers put together a deal for him and the Lions then have five days. And I believe it was Friday uh, that the 49ers uh, signed him to that offer sheet. So the Lions have five days to match it. And if they don't, then he signs with the 49ers on that three-year, $12 million offer in which uh, they signed him for. So Brock Wright seems like a pretty solid tight end, too, mm -hmm. uh, for the 49ers if he were to be signed. But, you know, we got a couple couple days left uh, before, uh, I guess, we find yeah. out. And I think it was strategic, too, on the 49ers to have him sign that offer sheet on a Friday have you know the lines think about it on a weekend or, or not think about it you know like e either way i think that's a bit of a you know gameplay by the 49ers there a bit of a move and so yeah we'll wait to see what happens there that can also change the number that jason gave us for 49ers current cap if that goes through so um definitely keep tabs on all things with the 49ers cap by following jason on twitter or X uh, at 49ers cap. Um, and you also have your own website, right, Jason? Yep. 49ers cap.com. Awesome. And you, you keep that up to date as well. Okay. So if you guys love to be updated with all the numbers, make sure you guys check those out. Uh, but Jason, as always, I appreciate having you on. You, you know, your stuff, you know these numbers like the back of your hand, so I, I definitely Thank always you. appreciate it, and Thank we'll, ha you. we'll have to have that. you on again, uh, yes. you know, sometime yes. soon. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so much, Steph. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone that tuned in. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, because there will be more content like this. I'll be back on Wednesday with uh, Desi for our Wacky Wednesday show. So make sure you guys tune into that. But for now, have a good rest of your. 
Monday, folks. Don't get got by any of those April Fool's jokes out there. They're running rampant. Mm -hmm. uh, but for now, peace.